What's up guys? So today we're gonna do recover. This is a hard problem, but with my help, hopefully this will become much easier. What I do recommend you is for you to take a look at the lab uh, corresponding to this problem. So if I'm not mistaken, the lab is called, uh, I forgot. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not called, I forgot. It's called, uh, it is called uh, volume. So volume gets the same idea from this problem set, but it's easier. So you get you comfortable with F read, F write, uh, defining your own types. Uh, those are all gonna be very important in this problem. Also, what I really recommend is for you to go through over and over again on Brian Yu's uh, explanation of this problem. And he has a very good graph where he explains pretty well what you're supposed to do. So actually, let's take a look at this. Uh, and I wanna take you to where he shows the problem. So this is it. So basically you're reading, so each one of those squares are 512 bytes. How do I know that? Because they say here in the problem, 512 bytes. That's the size of a fat file system, uh, which is the file system we're dealing with. So we're gonna read blocks of 512 bytes. Once we find this uh, 0F, 0xff, 0xdh, 0xff, that means uh, it's the starting of my JPEG files. According to the problem, once you find the first JPEG problem, uh, file, all the other JPEGs will be adjacent. So once you see the first one, you're gonna have blocks of codes and then you see another one and another one. So they're all side by side. How do you know when this first yellow uh, JPEG file ends? When you see the tag for a JPEG again. So you need to check for this uh, JPEG header and he goes through how to find out. So basically you need to check out, keep an eye for the JPEG file. So basically it's uh, FF, D8, FF. And then the last, the fourth byte can be anything with an E. Uh, we'll see how we can just, so basically if the last, the fourth byte has an E, we don't care about the last byte. So we'll see a way we can do that. So that's what we wanna do. We wanna open this file of bytes, read 512 bytes at a time. Once we see a JPEG, so it's very good to reason in English because then things get much easier. By the way, if you wanna get the solution, it's on the description. I'll also give you tips on how to become a developer without a degree. So I got you covered. So that's the header. We keep on looping. We keep on writing to the output file. Once we found another header, I close this preview, this yellow JPEG, open a new one and keep on reading. I see another header, close the previous one and keep on reading. So this is what we're gonna do. So the first step is for us to define a byte uh, variable. So in C we are provided this type uint U I U int eight. Uh, so that is eight bits, which is equivalent to a byte. And since each block size has 512 bytes, I also define a variable called block size. Then to make our code more readable, I created a variable called check argument count, check file exists and is JPEG. So the first thing we're gonna do is check if the number of arguments is correct. So we're gonna check if our exe is different than two, if it's not, we exit out. Then we open the file, so we use f open, pretty standard, so the argument will be on argv1 and we open it for reading. And then we check if the file exists. So basically all we are doing is checking if the file is different than null. So this is basically arrow checking, nothing new. So this we do something very similar to what we did on lab four volume. So we're gonna create a buffer. So a buffer is nothing more than an array, an array of bytes that have 512 bytes. So that's the size of the block of, uh, the, the, the JPEG block that's given to us. 
We also are going to create a buffer for the file names because we're creating file, new files and we'll see the 